Girl, you took my time from me, think I ain't gon' fight back Still missing out on times I feel like important On child support cause I ain't wish it feels like extortion Hey y'all, back again at my new set, breaking it in Um, I got my wet mic here today He's from Greenville. I'm gonna let him tell you a little about what he got going on. Alright, what's on me? <laughs> yeah, tell the people. <laughs> Alright, I'm Mike Deal. I uh, do a little song, song, do a little rapping, do a little full time truck driver rapping on my spare time. When did you start rapping? Because I, I like it, but I just don't remember because I went to high school with Mike Yeah. Yeah, truth be told, I started off with poetry. I, started, I was in a creative writing class and. Um, I see that. Yeah, I started out with poetry and then my friends just told me to turn it into music. Like, that's, you know, that's how I came about doing it. So when did you decide to take it serious? Uh, I don't know. I dropped the real ass. I got to tell you, the real ass film. I dropped it in 2018. I think once I made my first one or two songs, I heard it and I started getting some feedback from it. And then I just noticed I started like to rap about reality and real life yeah. topics then. My favorite rappers weren't making the kind of music that I wanted to make. So, the real talk, that's where it started from. So, I started the reality rapping. Put out what you wanted to hear. Yeah, exactly what exactly. I wanted to hear. Okay, same, same I feel like it. That. And so, that's your rap name. I didn't even know that. It's Mike Deal. Mike Deal. Okay, okay. Mike Deal. Like How did that come about? I was, I was young. They was calling me Deal. Oh, so this is like a basketball, probably. Well, that's when I was showman. Oh, yeah. showman. Yeah, okay, showman. that's what it is on Facebook, I think. Yeah, neighborhood in the Greenwood, it was calling me Mike Deal, and so when I had to think of a rap name, I already answered to that, so it's like oh. Mike Deal. So you from the West? West Greenwood. West Greenwood. Real West Greenwood, not <laughs> Brandy, not the city limits. <laughs> it's not the city. <laughs> yeah. Real uh, West Greenwood. All right, so Mike Deal, tell the people what's your new project? What you working on? Oh, uh, I'm in the process of doing the real ass rap too, but uh, I don't know the way the song's going right now. I'm just kind of going out the moment, like. Um, I dropped a song called Mama um, at the beginning of the summer. I did that. That was just a spare the moment song. It was just what I was feeling. Then I came back. I did, think I did uh, mm, Good Ain't Good Enough. I don't know if that was next. I don't know. Right now, I'm just kind of putting out music however I feel. Put, okay. putting it's out kind of spontaneous. As much as I feel and keep on flooding it until the demand gets stronger. Now, I've seen your latest visual. Are you dropping visuals with all of them? Or? Yeah, that's what it seemed like. So on my first tape, I didn't do no videos. I should have, I think about going back and doing something. I ain't do not one on thing. So this one right here, I, um, I just feel like I need to give everybody, you know, an idea of who I am. So that's why I rap about personal stuff, whether it's like, you know, uh, relationships, all this kind of, I just want to give them a feel of what's going on, you know, because I ain't got to be tough all the time, you know, I'm, I've been that. So, yeah, so. That's kind of why I met with it. Okay, well it makes sense you saying that it started from poetry because I feel like most poetry has more substance than rap. I hate to say it. Yeah. Depending on you know depending on the person. Mm -hmm. So I mean that makes perfect sense. And if you listen to my songs, like I don't know, I do a good job of expressing myself through music. It's like therapeutic for me. So most of the stuff I'm rapping about is really real life. It's really I'm breaking it down exactly. In the song. Telling the story basically. Exactly how it happens. Exactly how it happens. Yeah. Like exactly how it happens. So, yeah, and it's, it's like personal. Yeah, it's personal. So, who are your biggest, I would say, influences? As far as like your music, when it comes to the music. Music. Um, growing up, it was like Ti. Ti. Okay. Yeah, I used to like Ti, G's, and all that kind of stuff like that. But um, yeah. it's like Outkast. Um, I don't know, but right now it's kind of like music changed so much. It changed so much. Everybody dripping and swagging and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's like it changed so much. And I think that's what made me different is because I'm really making music that I want to make. So and my first tape, The Real Ass Forever, I kind of, I ain't going to say it. I, I kept it original, but I uh, I was making songs that I thought people might want to hear too. Kind of conforming. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Now, everything for me is a Strictly what I want to hear, what I what I believe in, what I'm standing on, and that's how I have it. And um, I don't even know if I got any. Oh, I do have some features. I got a couple features. I got a feature um, from the song with um, okay. Days Carter. I did that song by Jewel, my okay. homeboy Jewel guy. Okay. Yeah. A song called Cry. And uh, I actually went and got um, Al Poco done, done down. Me and him got a song. 
Yo. Yeah, he been hard. Yo, I haven't yo. heard nothing from him. I like, but well, I really like his freestyles. Yo. Like, I don't even. You ain't even got to drop no songs for me. Yo. You can just drop YouTube, YouTube freestyles, and I'd be happy. Exactly, exactly. So I had to, cause you know everybody he from Greenville, so I had to go find him. And I find him, and I got him in the lab. We got a got a good one. Actually, we got a few. I want to hear that. Yeah, we got a few. I ain't put that one out yet. Uh, okay, I definitely So that's coming. Um, I got plans to work with uh with Dreek, man, Dreek. Dreek, Dreek, man. We supposed okay, to do some stuff. Yeah. So uh, uh, shoot. I don't know, cause I work with a few people on my first take. So this one right here, whatever makes sense is what I'm doing. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. whatever, going with the storyline. Mm -hmm. yeah. We gonna talk about some real shit because uh that's what i do mm -hmm. and besides i always talk about the kids and just to get on a personal level i know the people some of your facebook friends probably know because it was kind of on facebook yeah but my boy got custody well he's at joint custody of his son but i remember a few months back you couldn't even see him yeah yeah i was going through some stuff i was in a marriage you know what i'm saying it went went left it went bad and um it just yeah, it went bad, and then it was, had to fight for some custody, but uh, now, that's better. What you got to do is you got to get a lawyer and um, better just wait it out, you know? Man, thank you, Lord. I know a lot of people your age, younger, older, like, they can't see their child. They be going, like, I see all the stats, but it's like they scared. They don't know where to start. I, really, I don't know what's wrong with them. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, just to get real about it, like, you go through, that's a traumatic experience, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't. And I ain't here to bash nobody. I'm just gonna tell you how, how I, the feeling of it. When you trying to see a child and you really care about it and you can't, it's 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 tough or whatever. And so your first instinct, like you know, you to have a child, so it's kind of like your first instinct. Even though I didn't care, and that's what that's what men get. Like yo, y'all didn't care at this child, so you don't know. But you still develop an attachment. Like nine months, you waiting on the child to come to you, expecting it or whatever. So it's like, and you knowing like. You went in on that child, so when they come out, yeah, when they come out here, you you want to be me. I wanted to be at every ultrasound for me. I wanted to be at every step of the way. You know what I'm saying? So when that wasn't able to happen, and uh, you know, I understand people don't work out. That, you know, when you go certain so long without seeing a child and stuff like that, and when you try, it's not a good feeling or whatever. So instead of going crazy, what you have to do is tell yourself that. The mother love him just as much as you do. She not letting that happen to him. You know that, and so then you just have to uh, get yourself together and get your lawyer. Get your lawyer. So that's what I did. I uh, got a lawyer, and um, now I got joint custody of my boy, and I here with me right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't even stress about that no more. And how long was that process? It was long. It was, it was it was a long time. It was uh the hold up the separation and divorce was man. The process for me getting a lawyer, it wasn't that long. When I got a lawyer and I told him everything that was going on, he was able to tell me my rights, put it together real quick, give me some visitation right away. And um, that's the thing. Yeah. Bam. Right away. Right away. We get you some visitation right away and um, start off with like a temporary agreement and then once that you know get finalized and you have you know. Okay. Yeah, that's you know, why I think a lot of people be scared like it ain't gonna do nothing. But I'm like, I don't know. Me personally, that's why I'm. I'm not messing with no white people. Give me a lawyer. It definitely right. would be something. It, it can give you a peace of mind. Because if you don't want to talk to that person no more or whatever, and as long as you have that paperwork, you can you can actually block the other person, which I don't recommend it. You should have better have a good, healthy communication. Co parent. Yeah. But if, if it's cane, if it's too toxic, so then you can actually not do no communicating. And then it's when it's your time to get them, it's like, hey, that's when you reach out and say, look, you know, it's my time. And do it like that. Get on the same page. Okay, well, I'm glad that went good for you because I remember. I was praying for you. You was going through it, honey. I was worried about you. Yeah, so many thought anybody anybody that's going through that, because I'm telling you, you go through that, it's, you have thoughts, so you get the pride. Like, I lost weight. I'm getting my weight back. I'm yeah, saying, I yeah, I'm getting my weight back. So you lose weight. You you go through a, a real life of depression. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm not a father, so like that's not gonna happen. Imagine this though. Yeah. You, I'm gonna give, give you one. You're like you had to start having anxiety. Imagine you don't see your daughter in a while and you can't, and then you know where she at. And you can't get to them. And Joe ain't pick up the phone yesterday. I called her daddy. Where is where is Joe? Yeah, she's talking about I took her phone. Like I, my nerves bad already. So I already know I couldn't go through something like that. But yeah. So I mean, like I said, I can mend you. Yeah. And I just want everybody to know it's you know it's ways of ways to do it. We feel the same way. Some some dudes do. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but 
a lot of dudes do feel uh, the same way. Like you start getting anxiety and all that. But now I know, like I know, I knew then nobody's gonna let that happen to the child. But I'm knowing where he at and I can't physically go down there and see him or mm -hmm. physically get nobody to respond to me. That's the point that you like. That's my child. That's right, don't ignore me. Right, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that's my child. And then this, this thing, you know if something happens to one of the parents, Lord forbid, if something happened, he would come to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I would get all the rights to him. And it's like you want to create a, a good, healthy relationship with the other people because I wouldn't want to be on those fights and stuff like, okay, well, I got him now. Y'all ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to do it like that. It's just like, it's just keeping on, you know. One chord. One chord. So. so we dropped a video at the end of every interview. Okay. I normally let y'all pick, but I picked today because mm -hmm. you got that, that video for Ease the Pain. I love the song. Mm -hmm. Controversial. Of course, I'm going to love it. Mm -hmm. So what kind of backlash did you get with that? Because I know mm -hmm. the pe people don't like real. And it was real. Yeah. Well, see, I'm going to say this first. All my songs is real. Right? I've heard a lot of stuff, but not from nobody. That, um, from the close people. Yeah, from the people from, like, you know, family members, like, you know, Baby daddy and uncle. People I, know you. No, no, yeah. They young folks in race, they like uh, like I know the situation we're talking about was supposed to lost their life. But I know like um like Robbie, he told me so I needed that song. I listened to that song ten times as soon as you sent it to me. So I needed it. And her uncle, he said, Mike, I, he don't he never met me for real. Mm -hmm. he said, Mike, I'm standing behind it. I I really like this song, right? I received backlash from other people that don't know me and ain't never really follow me and I saw some say people say something about some clout, all this kind of stuff. But if you know me, yeah. And if you do like your homework on me, every song that I have done, I got song where I'm talking about my dad in it. I got song where I'm you know, I'm I'm talking about, you know, feelings with my mom. I got feelings when I'm talking about my story with my wife. I got feelings when I'm talking about my son, you know, when I was married, I got feelings, you know, about my son. So all my music is the same way. Right. So it was new to the audience who never heard this from me. But look, I'm breaking that even further. When I got that news of what happened, I had family members in there. You know, mm -hmm. just like everybody I had family members, I had friends. And tell them people, because for the people who haven't listened, mm -hmm. what are you referring to? What happened? Are okay. You? I can have a song called Ease the Pain. Um, it was a shooting that happened in the club here in Greenville. Well, two people lost their life and I think eight more people got shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was easy to personalize that because it's right here at home. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I said, I had family members in there. So when that happened, my first thought is that could have been, hell, it could have been me. It could have been you. It could have been, you know, so it's not hard to personalize that. And then you start to have questions in your mind. Like, first you get mad. Like, first I was mad. That's why the first verse of that song, Easy Pain, I'm talking about that shooter. I'm talking bad about him. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the, the other rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm talking about him. Like, I'm just saying, because I want to say in the video you posted, I watch you live. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about all that. After you get that part of it, and then I, I love the way uh, Crack Station and the way he captured this video. I'm going to go back to it. But, um, because this was what I was really doing. I, I got the news and I just started writing because I told you it's like therapeutic for me. But my second part of frustration was like, how they get the guns in? That's what everybody wanted to know. I know a lot of people, some people took offense to that because the aggression that I put behind asking the questions on how they get in, and I seen with it like, um, I wanted to, I said, I want to question you. And one of the guys that got, you know, that lost his life was a security guard. Not yeah, to say, CJ. yeah, yeah, and I, I like CJ, got a lot of respect for CJ. Him and my parents, I think, went to the same church. Uh, long story short, I wasn't trying to contradict myself. It's just like, CJ could have been doing his job. I don't want to say nobody else wasn't doing his job, but it's like, in that situation, like, you wonder what happened. Like, who, who, how did they get it in? Maybe they snuck it past the security. But I asked the questions that everybody, everybody, was, thinking, everybody yeah. was thinking. And so, a lot of people focus only on that, on that second verse. But if you go to the third verse, I'm saying, hey, if we don't stop this bullshit, everything we out here fighting for, y'all gonna ruin it, you know? And I even say, I know this ain't, just, you wake up and on the hill, but open up your eyes, we in the water, shit for real. Right. You know, and I'm, I'm elaborating, like, I'm with you really. Like, we on the same side. Let's stop all this. Let's stop this, you know, foolishness because we out here at a wall. We trying to, you know, it's a bigger picture, you know? And so the third verse, I really tied it in. And I'm gonna tell you, I never did never for clout. I, um, even to this point, all the, like, people who showed up in the video shoot with, like, guns and stuff, 
every gun, ain't no gun in my video. Every gun is removed. Like every gun is removed. We didn't want that message to be nothing besides what I was really trying to say. Right. You know what I'm saying? I shot a video the first time. It was all. Uh, it was a good video, but at the same time, it was a stronger message behind the song, so we reshot it. You know, okay. reshot it and wanted to make sure that it this tied in. it tied in. And you know what? I haven't heard no backlash from that video. Nobody, people who were speaking bad about me, I ain't seen them speak on that one at all. You know, I ain't seen them speak on anything at all. So I just kind of left it where that, you know, where it was at. And somebody didn't need to do it. I didn't think I was gonna be the one to have to speak for this, but somebody needed to speak up speak up you know what yeah. i'm saying and so it's like me i wear my own shoes i don't have a big name like all these other but i'm gonna do what i do and i'm always been comfortable like that i understand i respect it all right so as i said we're gonna drop um mike deals new video ease the pain and tell the people wh where they can contact you where they find your music how they reach you you can find me um if you can, I'm on all um, music platforms. If you were just looking for the music, like on Apple Music, title, I think I'm even on Pandora right now. But if you gotta type in Mike Deal, Mike Deal, and then if you wanna find me on Instagram, it's like Mike Deal underscore, and um, just go to YouTube and type in Mike Deal, and you'll see my um, my videos on there, stuff like that. But Ease the Pain is a it's a pretty good song. I think y'all should check it out. New video released from the Greenville County Sheriff's Office paints a chilling picture of the aftermath inside Lavish Lounge early Sunday morning. The shooting sparked by a scuffle, according to Greenville County Sheriff Hobart Lewis, 12 rounds fired, hitting 10 victims. Pray for my city. I'm from the city, I understand, I take this personal yeah. We've been through heartbreaks, saves and pains, but times is worse than worse It's like a dark cloud on my city Will I live to see the day to say I'm proud of my city? I wonder that When I heard about this shooting, I couldn't stomach that It break my heart, CJ, Michaela Bell ain't coming back And to that shooter, do you realize what you did? You took a man from his family, you took a woman from her kids You a bitch, and Fujiano, bro, I don't respect it Bro, your life is never Threaten y'all niggas just moving reckless. That video you posted, I watch you lie. You know who did that shit? It ain't no justice till they die. Motherfucker. I look around at my city, this shit amaze me. It's like they took the air out this bitch. It's been deflated. Who we got to call on? Tell me who gon' save it. I hope this song ease the pain, and that's just why I made it. You know, I don't respect. For what? How the fuck they get them guns in? Really, that's the question. 